Now, let me stop speaking from script and do what I'm much more used to, which is talk about the budget. As I say, the team down below, they're the guys who analysed it with a magnifying glass, so they actually know the real story, and they will correct me if I'm wrong and answer any difficult questions you have. Now, that lists the key budget measures. What it looked like was uh, George Osborne kept on pulling rabbits out of hats, and you tended to think, how on earth did all the sums add up? And, of course, the answer is, that when you looked at the small print, they didn't. Um, he put in a, a slush fund of a 1.4 billion allowance for what he claimed would come from reduced tax avoidance, which is a, you know, the sort of thing Treasury people always put in uh, when they can't make their sums add up. Um, but even then, actually, um, he's borrowing about an extra three billion. So I call it Plan A plus. It's, uh, he, he, he has more or less given up on the idea of uh, his fiscal virginity. Um, there are quite a lot of interesting things, and actually most of the measures are probably quite sensible. The tragedy is they're being introduced now in 2013. Any one of these measures, if they were introduced in 2010, would be starting to have an economic impact. And it is so tragic that they misjudged their calculations so badly, they didn't think growth was a problem, and it's taken three years to start to do the sorts of things that they ought to be doing. They still have unrealistic expectations of Eurozone recovery, which uh, certainly, if you look at it from a Cypriot perspective, seem improbable. When I was in Abu Dhabi the day before yesterday, it was very clear that Middle East investors were trying to work out how to get their money out of European banks, because the idea that you might have a 10% levy suddenly imposed on you was not terribly attractive to the minds of these people. And why just 10%? You know, that's just an opening bid, perhaps. So they are seriously worried about that. Looking at the forecasts, I think the Office for Bad Predictions, or whatever they call themselves, the OBR, um, they, uh, they're still a bit on the cheerful side if you look in the medium term, but at least their short-term forecasts are realistic for the first time. But one of the consequences of that is that we can now see that not expected to be any progress in borrowing. Borrowing is actually uh, uh, scheduled uh, on our numbers to be higher in 2015 than it was in 2012. So they've more or less given up on deficit reduction. As I say, George Osborne lost his fiscal virginity and now he's going out to play around. One of the consequences of this is that we don't yet see on our forecasts, unless there's a change in policy, which I think there's going to have to be, uh, the debt-GDP ratio uh, slowing down, stopping going up. What it means, frankly, is the next election is quite a good election to lose. In terms of the individual measures, there's um, quite a sizable um, hike in the personal allowance. It comes in particularly in 2014-15, which noticeably reduces the tax paid at the bottom end of the scale. And, again, a major reduction in corporation tax. Now, had the government announced uh, four years ago that the corporation tax rate was going to come down from 30% to 20%, I reckon that would have had a huge incentive impact on the British economy. But I've heard of stealth tax increases. These are stealth tax reductions. We get a nickel and dime, and they do a little bit each time and they don't warn you about it in advance, and none of the moves are quite big enough. And just as stealth tax rises, you don't sort of notice them until they hit you, so with stealth tax reductions. If you're trying to get a positive economic effect, and cuts in corporation tax are one of the best ways, actually, of getting a positive economic effect, um, you make it bloody obvious what it is you're doing. And instead, we're having stealth tax reductions. Quite bizarre. I don't understand the logic of it at all. If they'd announced this programme, said we're going to get corporation tax down and we're going to be not that far uncompetitive with the Irish, uh, that's what our objective is, and said so, and said it, obviously you don't get it all in one go, uh, but this is what's happening. We would already now be getting major economic benefits as people started to shift their investment into the UK. As it is, it's a stealth tax reduction, which is not working. 
There's a clever idea around small business employment allowances where a two for, for new employees you get a 2,000 reduction in national insurance contributions, which um, given that the bulk of businesses in the country are small businesses, as this chart shows, uh, is potentially attractive to quite a lot of people. They are actually doing quite well already, <coughs> but on the back of this, they should be better. There's quite a clever package to support the housing market. We think the housing market was already starting to benefit from the funding for lending scheme, but on top of that, uh, it looks as if help to buy will further kick it forward. And ultimately, this will translate into house building, although it will work on the market first before it works on actual building. And we also have a new way of looking at the monetary, at monetary policy, which is being encouraged to look at unconventional means. The analysis they've done suggests that influencing expectations is the most important thing to do in monetary policy. I'm not sure I completely agree with that, but that's what they think. And so the changed monetary policy remit is targeted at influencing expectations, which is why uh, we can expect to see more and quite a lot of pre-announcements. They think they've worked in the US, and so they think it will work over here too. Now, whether we'll get the rise in interest rates that we're currently forecasting for the years beyond 2015, I don't know. I'm inclined to think that we may not even get those. Obviously, the critical issue is how this plays in the markets. Now, bond yields must go up because uh, they are artificially depressed. But given that we're probably going to have continued uh, 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 monetary easing and mon monetary printing, um, I wouldn't expect them to go up that much. Um, I think there's still going to be a score draw. I think the markets will just about give the thumbs up unless something bizarre happens from left field. So prob he'll probably get away with it. But what this does is say that the big fiscal problems are still to be dealt with and are going to have to be dealt with the next government. So as I say, my conclusion about the budget is it makes the next election a good one to lose. Now, you've all been immensely patient. I know occasionally some of you have looked at your watches. But uh, as I sometimes say at the end of these talks, I'm glad none of you have tapped them to see if they've stopped. Thanks very much indeed. <laughs>